With Mario Maker 2 less than two weeks away, there's a surprising amount of questions that haven't been answered yet. If you've been following my channel lately, you'll know exactly what I mean. But in this video, I want to go over things that have been confirmed, but might have gone under your radar. Some small, subtle differences or new features that you might not have known about. Let's get into it. So, most of this stuff was spotted during the Nintendo Treehouse livestreams at E3. But before we get into that, I want to take a look at this clip that's been posted to one of Nintendo's YouTube channels. The video is unlisted, but I'm assuming someone found it off of the Japanese Super Mario Maker 2 website. The clip shows off some interesting details about the Super Mario Bros. nighttime ground theme. Specifically, Chain Chomp chains are extended quite a bit further than normal. Like, quite a bit. And this super mushroom behaves exactly like a star. Very interesting. Speaking of nighttime themes, we were already aware of the nighttime desert having a sandstorm effect that pushes the player around in a certain direction. Well, it looks like the direction and speed at which the wind blows is entirely dependent on which game style the course is in. We've seen the nighttime desert in all four styles, and each of the wind patterns behave differently. In Super Mario Bros., it looks like the wind will only blow left every couple of seconds. In Super Mario Bros. 3, it blows to the right. In Super Mario World, it alternates between the left and the right. And in New Super Mario Bros. U, it appears to be constantly blowing to the right. While this unfortunately confirms that we can't customize the property of the nighttime effects, this gives hope that there are lots of different variations of the same effects across all four of the game styles. And yes, you heard me correctly. It doesn't appear that Super Mario 3D World will support nighttime themes because the Angry Sun and Moon assets are completely absent. Also somewhat confirmed is the lack of Shelmets in 3D World, as we've seen the variation UI of this spiny which has no option to turn it into a Shelmet. Things just keep looking worse and worse for 3D World. But if anything could redeem it, it would be the simple fact that we can honk the horn in the Koopa Troopa car. How freaking adorable. However, while this may seem like a fun little addition with no real gameplay consequences, what if it did have some minor gameplay mechanics? Now this is pure speculation, but it would be cool to see different enemies react to the honking horn. Like Goombas being alerted to Mario's position from the sound of the horn without having to get as close as he normally would. I can see a lot of strange puzzles being built with the car if honking the horn has any in-game effects. But getting back to the facts, Another thing that we learned at E3 was that bonsai bills colliding with exclamation blocks will fully extend them, the same way ground pounding on them would. Speaking of exclamation blocks, we also learned that the maximum amount of blocks it will extend is 10, as the arrow which allows us to draw its path disappears after reaching 10 spaces long. But wait, hold on a minute, let's go back to this clip. Something interesting to point out is this red POW block that destroys a huge amount of bricks around it. Slowing the footage down, we can see the bob only blows up this tiny area of bricks, but when it destroys the POW block, it clears out this whole wall. This red POW block has yet to be mentioned anywhere during all the promotion of the game, so there very well could be many things Nintendo has hidden away for us to discover ourselves. Arguably the most game-changing thing discovered is this right here. Wait, go back, you might have missed it. That's right, in the new Super Mario Bros. U game style, we finally have a door entering animation. Something that everyone was begging for. Okay, maybe not. But it goes to show that Nintendo didn't want to just add a couple new things to the game and call it good. They've improved on virtually every aspect and gave it a nice polish, making the original look more and more like a tech demo at this point. Moving on, here we can see Big Mario taking damage and reverting into Super Mario, instead of Small Mario like the original. This makes sense, as it should be considered a step up from a normal Super Mushroom, and every other Tier 1 power-up reverts you back to Super Mario after taking damage. In this clip, we can see that the default length of Snake Blocks are 5 blocks long and can be extended from there. A little later though, we get confirmation that scroll stop will work both for the right and left side of the screen, which is a huge victory in making our levels feel more natural and legitimate. Something to note, however, is that the scroll stop will not prevent enemy spawning, seen all the way back in the May Direct. 
even when the scroll stop is in effect, we can see this red Koopa's head poke through the right side of the wall, meaning off-screen contraptions will still work even with scroll stop active. Here we can see that coins will still disappear even when the clear condition is to collect a certain amount of them. This makes me anxious about all the levels where you'll have to race to collect all the coins before they poof out of existence. Speaking of poofing out of existence, say goodbye to sideways springs bouncing you away from completing a level in Super Mario World. It looks like passing anywhere between the goalposts will complete the level, no longer requiring you to actually touch the goal tape. A much more faithful adaptation of Super Mario World, as that's how it worked in the original game. Also being true to the original is the fact that sliding is not a thing in Super Mario Bros. While Mario does have a new ducking animation, ducking while on a slope does not cause him to slide. In this clip, it's simply the momentum of him running that causes him to inch forward. In every other game style, ducking here would cause him to gain momentum. However, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to butt slide your way into another one. If you're excited about Mario Maker 2 and trying to prepare yourself for its release, then I've got you covered. I've also got tons of stuff planned for the new game, so if you'd like to know when those come out, go ahead and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.